Hi everybody, it's Laura here. Welcome back to the Ultimate Transformation Plan 777. I'm sorry if I sound a little rough. I've got a summer cold and it is a doozy. Anyway, I wanted to keep going. I didn't want to like take too much time off um, because we're in the middle of our date week where I'm revealing seven different uh, dates seven uh, uh you know seven types of people and the pros and the cons to each one and then at the end of the series i'm going to explain to you exactly um who i chose and why uh, but it's a mystery up to that point uh, so we're going to go on with the next date and we're calling him the hot guy <laughs> so stay tuned for that We've all seen these guys, right? Like the jocks in high school or whatever. Um, and dating them. Okay, well, this is an interesting story. So the basically, this is like the, this is the dress I wore that caught his attention. It must be the red, I don't know, the red frillies. Uh, basically what had happened was um, I was with some friends at our local little place where we grab our little wine and chill and chat and catch up and whatnot. And uh, I dress up all the time. That's just kind of who I am. And out of nowhere, uh, somebody pops around the corner and uh, just really like striking looking. I was like, what is happening right now? And he just came up to me and said, you're beautiful and repeated it about a dozen times bought me a glass of wine and uh i was terrified because i had just come and out came off of a narcissistically abusive relationship and when somebody is really courageous and out there and kind of seems super confident uh my first red alarm is like narcissist that's the first thing that comes to my head and being that he was so good looking i'm like oh my god what what am I attracting? I am a magnet for the narcs. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, but anyway, so uh, he had given me his number <clears throat> and I had given him mine just, I think, to practice dating. And I did find him super attractive. I was just terrified that he was a narcissist. Um, so I kind of like had that in my head and then I'll tell you what happened. I don't know how nasally I sound, but I sure, I sure feel nasally anyway um, with this cold. So I just wanted to say, so the, basically he had texted me to go out with him. He said, I want to date you. And I'm like, oh God. So I actually said no. <laughs> I just did not want to go. I did not. His energy was super intense. And I don't know if he was used to getting that kind of like rejection, but I just felt it was a, it was a no at first for me. Um, and then uh, I had gone out with the island guy and uh, we had been in a little bit of a separation. And so basically I went, well, actually we broke up. Let's just put it that way. And, and I went to that same table, same watering hole um, uh, to lick my wounds, was feeling really sad. And this was like a few months later. Um, and he had come up to me while I was sitting there. I was by myself. I didn't want any company. You know how it is when you first kind of like are trying to get over something that was a problem. You, you want to be by yourself. And he came out of nowhere and uh, acted really empathetic and normal. <laughs> The first time I met him, I think he had had a few pints and maybe was not acting himself. And I really enjoyed his uh, company at that moment. And I thought, you know what? I maybe prejudged this guy. I prejudged him. So I'm going to uh, chat with him a little bit. So he was like trying to cheer me up and he's actually doing a pretty good job. And then uh, I thought he just went to the washroom and he had had like left. He had taken off and I was going to buy him a beer. And uh, so then what had happened was I texted him, are you in the washroom? And he's like, no, I, I left. I'm going to blah, blah, blah to grab some dinner. Do you want to meet me there? I'm like, uh, okay. And so there I go. 
So after getting there, I uh, met with him and he, he's kind of got a stoic way about him and um, really like a kind of like got this charm to him aside from the good looks. And he had started to um, do impressions uh, <laughs> of Sean Connery and had me in absolute stitches. So a guy that can make me laugh, there's my first pro. So this guy could make me laugh like nobody's business. I mean, his dry sense of humor, we're, I'm Canadian, we love our dry humor, made me laugh so hard. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, all right. And so then from there, I'll let you know what happened. <laughs> so then it was uh, in the summertime and basically what had happened was it was his b birthday. Like he, he said it was his birthday the next day. It was really within a couple of days. I think he was just using his birthday to kind of like make another date with me. And uh, so I, he asked me to go out and I couldn't resist saying, I, after he made me laugh and then also just seeing his nice side and it being his birthday, I'm like, all right, let's 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 roll with this and give this guy a shot and not prejudge the situation. And so then went um, on, it, it, he's like super spontaneous and adventurous. You never know where you're gonna go. You never know what you're gonna do. It's super fun and almost like teenager childlike. So the next pro I'm going to give him is that, uh, you know, the the exuberance, the zest for life and the childlike nature was super attractive to me. It kind of like takes a seriousness out of life and really makes it fun and playful. I'm like, this is crazy. He just had crazy odd, fun ways about him that made me laugh and uh, so that was number two is being fun and childlike i love that part okay and then so um that continued on and uh i noticed that in times where you know when you're quiet in the car or you're quiet in different places together but yet you don't need to talk that was to me also another pro because could just kind of like energetically read each other instead of it always being about talking because aside from his jokes and his cracking he's not he wasn't much of a talker so like there's not that much not to say he doesn't have things to say or conversation it's just his way was to be more brooding and more quiet and he's sort of like you know the jock good looking guy so it was his way um and he's a cancer so it was like basically hard outer shell soft inner shell but that's another another story so when you when you get to somebody who's got that hard outer shell it's kind of like a bit interesting to get in deeper and i'm a scorpio and i'm all in for i'll, I'll keep i'll keep researching until i figure you out because you have me curious <laughs> anyways so my experience with the hot guy was different than what I thought. I'm going to go into the cons because we have to talk about that's part of our show here. So one of the cons I noticed is that you never quite knew. There was a lot of unpredictability, but it also came with hot and cold energy. And although it's kind of mysterious, it is not very... Um, reliable as far as if you're progressing in a relationship so although things were very fun hot steamy exciting all that stuff it could go cold really easily and that same energy was would not be there so it wasn't something i could count on like all the time it would come up and then it would go down and come up and so a bit it was a roller coaster ride so that there was hot and cold energy um and that was another another issue we'll go into the other two all right, so along with the hot and cold energy, um, we'll, we'll, we'll attach this to it. There was uh, sometimes issues around follow through. <laughs> so like intentions or promises made and then if the energy was cold the next time that that's off the table. So it was kind of a little bit, well, was unpredictable. Then the next issue was um, when drinking now, we were great when we were alone, but then when drinking and out, uh, that energy would shift again. I think ego would come into play and 
Uh, there'd be a couple things going on. I think there was a little bit of um, jealousy control when drinking and then also there uh, there was some ego and like wanting to have bravado because you know he knows he's good-looking so b basically that when anger came out when drinking it it was it could be very unacceptable so depending on how how <laughs> extensive it got it was um, always a fear factor you know whenever drinks were picked up is it going to be a good night or is it going to be a bad night so again hot cold never know could be good could be bad it's 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 a roll of the dice <laughs> and so that's the second con because that that uh, leads to unpredictability that is uncomfortable <laughs> and then lastly the emotional of it unavailability along with commitment issues along with that side of things i think uh when masculines get injured in their uh dating world or in their childhood or whatever it's from then uh they learn to detach in order to protect and so pff, accessing that side like what, what i'm talking there's a crab shell there's a crab shell and it is thick and it, it takes extraordinary amounts of patience, time, trust building, all kinds of things, just to just dig in just a little bit. So that's always uh, a challenge. So again, let's just recap. Pros can make me laugh, fun, childlike, and spontaneous and super exciting. Um, but we could be quiet and still have kind of like a depth energy between us so there was like a chemistry energy that was undeniable for sure cons hot and cold unpredictable in not always the best ways and uh which sometimes led to drinking sometimes uh, led to anger hot and cold behavior when drinking and anger when drinking and then also the emotional avail unavailability it's like prying open with a crowbar one little thing which is <laughs> exhausting and uh you know you need to be able to communicate so talking is not was not a strong suit for hot guy but you know isn't it interesting how you get different things from each different type of person um, it's all about what is most important to you and I'm not saying I'm perfect by no means am I I have a million issues I'm just talking to you about the ones that didn't align um, for me uh, I'm sure if these people were to do a YouTube video they could easily list three pros and three cons about me because I am not, I'm feisty. I got a million, I got a million issues. So <laughs> I'm emotional. Um, uh, sometimes I, I don't take it easy. Sometimes I push too hard, all kinds of stuff. I got all kinds of issues, but um, just trying to figure out what matches me best because we all, we all have stuff. So I hope that's been helpful and I hope if for those of you who do get into the dating scene, what I'm trying to do is share with you my experiences as a dating detective to give you some help in um, uncovering and feeling okay about doing pros and cons in your dating experience and making sure that you examine how you feel about each one, taking time to step back and seeing what can you work with and what can't you work with and then deciding what's gonna be right for you in the long term and remember you guys deserve love you deserve happiness and the best of everything and all of these people i'm grateful for so um again i'll let you know what ends up happening in the end after i go through the entire list uh sounds like i'm a dataholic but i'm really not <laughs> i actually had very little dating experience um personally i was a matchmaker i spoke to over 100 men a day so i understand their thinking but personal is different than uh other because i was a i'm a serial monogamist i was married and then in a long-term relationship and didn't date all that much so um this is my sharing of my experience as a mature woman in my new skin because as you get older you definitely get wiser so hopefully it's been helpful and we'll see you guys in the next one bye for now